Hey, I'm Vincent. In this lesson, we're going to be dealing with rotating shapes, which is another great step in assessing perspective views. As you can see, the setup of, the question of this lesson is similar to the previous ones like folding shapes, except the gist of these questions are slightly different. This time, we're not going to be building 3D shapes, but rather we're going to be analyzing how a shape is rotated and replicated. As you can see, there are five questions, but I'm going to only help you solve two of them. At the end of the video, I want you to try the rest on your own and I'll show you the answers. Without further delay, let's get started. So we're gonna start with, uh, with A. And as you can see, there are answer choices one through five, but what's the question? Well, first we're gonna be analyzing how this first shape is rotated. And then we're gonna apply that same rotation to the second shape. And that will be our answer. So to find out how a shape's been rotated, I'm gonna teach you a trick I often like doing which is basically tracking a face. For example, I'm gonna color in this small piece right here, the small rectangle, that is some way unique compared to the other faces. Be and when you pick a, a face to use, it's likely that it should be unique or easy to find. The smaller rectangle is easy to track because it's smaller and there's no other face that looks like it. So in this resulting image, the rectangle ends up here. Can you identify how it moved? If you said the rectangle, move to the right, or rotate it counterclockwise, then you're absolutely correct. By the way, a horizontal rotation means that it moves to the side, or moves in an angle on a flat plane. A vertical rotation is if it flips or goes upside down. Just for another brief clarification, clockwise is this way and counterclockwise is in the opposite direction that a clock goes. A horizontal rotation is simply rotating sideways. Now that we know what horizontal rotation is, we can now actually draw a horizontal circle or clock underneath this image. From this, we find that the image moves this way. So now we're gonna draw a plane and we're gonna track how this, uh, how this small rectangle moves. So first, we're gonna color in the initial rectangle, which starts there. And then we're gonna color in a rectangle after the, after the uh, shape rotates. So after we tracked this, we can now see that this rectangle rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. And so we're now gonna go back up to this image and draw a circle under it. We're gonna, we're gonna use it, that, the small square on the side as our reference point. So once after we rotate it 90 degrees, we can now see that the square, that the square we used as a reference will end up there. And after looking at the answer choices, you can see that 2 is the only one that has that square in that place. Easy, right? Let's move on to a slightly harder one, D, because there's no clear rotation, at least not yet. We're going to use this odd shape right here as a reference because it's unique and it's also easy to find. Once you color this shape, you'll begin to realize something. This shape doesn't actually switch sides. So it ought, in both in both models, it stays actually in the front. So from here, we can actually tell that this is not a horizontal rotation because it would be on another on another side, but this is actually a vertical rotation because the shape is different on both sides. And so now we're gonna stick to drawing a vertical clock instead because it is a vertical rotation. So we're now gonna draw a plane like we did in the previous example. Here, we're gonna put our odd shape on the third quadrant. So now, 
After a 90 degree turn, we can now see that the shape looks like this. But we begin to notice something. That's not what the shape looks like on the rotated image. So why don't we try rotating it again, another 90 degrees. And here, we can see that both shapes, that this shape in the plane and the shape in the rotated model looks exactly the same. So if we rotated this shape to 90 degree angles, then that means that the total amount that we rotated was 180 degrees counterclockwise, which is in the opposite direction of a clock. So let's start looking back at the original image. So we're gonna use the base of this shape as our reference. Because as you can see in both 2 and 4, and also the other answer choices, you can tell that the bottom of this image is a flat plane. So after a 90 degree vertical rotation, counterclockwise, we're now going to draw the square after it's been rotated. But since we rotated it 180 degrees, we're going to rotate it 90 degrees again, and I'm going to use this blue color. As you can see, the shape is now upside down. So that means that 2 and 4 are the only possible candidates for the right answer. Now, which one's the correct answer? Well, remember that this is a horizontal rotation, so that square should still be on the front. And 2 is the only one that has the square in the front. So therefore, 2 would be the right answer. Tricky, right? Well, try doing it by yourself. Pause the video if you want to try it yourself. Well, here are the answers. I'm going to leave you off here. I hope you under now understand my method of doing it, and I hope you develop your own. See ya!